I'm Robert Black, and this is the Marlins Bite Not Works. Welcome back. Today I have a treat. I want to introduce you to the International Guild of Knot Tires. The Guild is a United Kingdom based charity that has been dedicated to the preservation of the sailor's art of knotting and fancy rope work for nearly a quarter of a century. In today's presentation, we're going to meet the Guild's co founders, its first president, and the Guild's current president. And I'm going to take you along to a guild meeting so you can see these beautiful knots and meet the wonderful people that make up this organization. So start out with, though, we're going to meet Jeffrey Budworth on the left in the video and Des Possett on the right in the video. They co-founded the guild. I caught up with them in Weston Supermare near Bristol, England at the guild's annual meeting. Let's listen. I'd like to know a little bit about how, we came how you guys came together and yeah. how the guild got started to begin with. Because yeah. this was 20, Do you want me to start? 21 years ago, however. It was, yeah, it was around 1978 uh, okay. and uh, a new knot uh, came up. Someone had found a new knot and was talking about it and uh, I was brought in to say whether I thought it was new and whether I had ever seen it before uh -huh. and uh, we got a bit of publicity. And from that, the letters started to come in from other people, and that's when I heard from Des. Yeah, I mean, I saw somebody phone me up. I thought they were teasing me when they said there was a new knot on the front page of the Times, and uh, did I know it? And I immediately, at that lunchtime, rushed off and got a copy of the Times, and immediately wrote to Jeff, because in the article it mentioned those journals that are interested in knotting matters. And uh, I thought I had missed out on this. I so see. I wrote to, to, to Jeff and explained my interests, which were, were tools, books, as well as the rope work its, itself. Uh -huh. And uh, I got a letter back very, very quickly to the effect that they were similar interests that you had, really, weren't they, Jeff? That's yeah. right. There wasn't really a journal at that stage. Right. But we quickly thought that there ought to be a newsletter or something, uh -huh. because I had the names and addresses of perhaps 20 people. Uh, who said they were interested in knots. And I'd, I been, I'd been collecting people when I'd been demonstrating when people had said uh -huh. that they were interested in knots. I'd been collecting names for the very reason my father belonged to an organisation called the Letterbox Study Group. The now, letterbox, I thought yeah. if there could this be is mailboxes. Group, this is, yeah, mailbox yeah. study group. Um, if they could study those, there ought to be an organisation for knot tying. So they're studying the mailboxes, the construction yeah, of mailboxes. That's it, and the styles and the history of them and so forth. Uh -huh. And if they did that, we should do the same with my interest. And so as I met people that were similarly uh, mm -hmm. interested, I took their names. And in fact, some of those people uh, tended to that very first meeting that we held on um, RM RMS, was it? It was, yes, the Royal Research Ship Discovery. Yeah, RRS, Discovery. Which is an old an Antarctic exploration ship. Uh -huh. In fact, Des can take credit for, uh, for having gotten together. We thought we'd have a meeting in a public house or something. Uh -huh. And if six people came and we all took nuts and had a drink, that mm -hmm. would be something right. that hadn't happened before. It in fact, it was a wonderful venue in the, in the London docks by Tower Bridge and 25 people came. 28, something like that, including, and one of the important things was that we had letters of support and the request to be part of that founding coming from Australia. Really? Yes, uh, Canada. And, and America. And America. So wow. that's why the guild immediately started as an international uh, guild of not tires. And the spelling of the word tires was discussed at that first yes, meeting. Yes, of course. And was agreed. <laughs> yeah. yes. And uh, 
and from from those small uh, knots, as it were, it's gone around the world. It's now a UK okay. registered charity, um, uh, educational charity, right. and uh, a membership um, in excess of a thousand. Yeah. And Notting can never be the same because no. we've now got Notting Matters coming out. We've got local branches, um, both in terms of local counties and local states and local uh -huh. countries and groups gathering together using much the same philosophy that we did in the very first instance. Mm -hmm. A few people writing to a few other people and effectively self-funded and self-started. Right. Now, were, were each of you recognised as, I mean, you know, the, uh, when you said a new knot came out and somebody called you and wanted to authenticate it, were you recognized I as I individuals was, as... I was getting that way. I, I was a serving a London police inspector. Oh, you um, were? But I was um, writing and uh, occasionally broadcasting uh, about knots. About uh, knots. Somebody okay. had to. Not many people were. Right. And uh, that's how I got uh, to be the center of attention. But then, uh, I think it was Des in association was with the National Maritime Museum. That, they, they called right. you their expert. I mean, you That's didn't right. actually work there and, no. and anything like that. They have no experts. So you were a policeman? Yes, I was. Um, Interesting. But then, of course, Des, who at that time had another day job, was uh, had been aspiring, I think, for some time to get into the rope working business. Well, I, I, I were, had already got a business making rope work and selling rope work mm -hmm. prior to the foundation of the guild right. I was demonstrating and and r running my business foot rope knots as a mm -hmm. as a business part time but still on a business ba background but if, if it hadn't been this claim of a new knot you you guys may never have gotten yeah, together absolutely. is that right no, that's right and the man uh, the man who did that was was a, a retired physician by the name of Dr Hunter Dr uh -huh. Edward Hunter yeah. and uh, the knot that he had come up with the, the mm -hmm. press very quickly christened Hunter's Bend oh um, the Hunter's Bend now as it turned out um, and this often happens with knots uh, someone else had found it uh, earlier uh, mm -hmm. And that man was an American called Phil Smith. Mm -hmm. But uh, the publicity that Dr. Hunter got for his bend, in inverted commas, mm -hmm. uh, was what brought, all, brought us all together to start with. And, and uh, until his dying day, he was very proud of the fact that uh, he'd well, been instrumental. It must have been an interesting running. time when the idea of a new knot would generate enough interest to be in a newspaper article. Would that happen today, do you think? It was, I mean, it, I, I think it was fate, don't you? Yes, it was. An, this and was a karmic was a, event? He was a man who had contacts, and one of those was Philip Howard, who was uh, a leading journalist for The Times. Oh, and The Times ran it on their front page. Right. And uh, as a consequence, other newspapers uh, quickly copied it. Can you imagine, though, the front page article today about a new knot? Well, the, the, the circumstances may be right one day for something on the front page. It may not be a new knot necessarily, but it, yeah. something ropey could go on the front page. Sure it could. just really was a quirk of fate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, we, had a, we have a, a, a satirical current affairs quiz on, on British television. I see. Um, uh, that snipes at everything and everybody who is yeah. in the public gaze. Yeah. Uh, and a little while ago, uh, they featured and had a bit of fun with our quarterly magazine, Nothing Matters. Is that right? As a result of which, we got several membership inquiries. inquiries. Because yeah. other, some thought it was uh, a bit of a joke, but those of us that are interested in knots take oh. the matter seriously, and oh. we can see uh, over and above the joke. Yeah. And they can say, and they join, and that's, I mean, we heard today. Right. That's somebody. right, that's right. We the, really don't the, care how they join as long as they join and get in the fray, right? No, that's right. Yeah. Just, uh, uh, towards the end of the Second World War, we're talking 1944, 45, 46, uh, the greatest influence on knots was uh, the monumental Ashley Book of Knots by the, the American Clifford, Clifford uh, yeah. Warren Ashley. And uh, that remains so for decades. Uh, I'm sure he would be delighted to know that the greatest influence on Notting today on its growth and development mm -hmm. is our international guild. Right. Um, and there's been a lovely sequel to that. You've met her, um, Ashley's daughter. Yes, yes, Phoebe yeah. Shardham, yes. And uh, she is a member of the guild and uh, we've had meetings in, in New Bedford, uh, which yeah. uh, have been uh, very, very rewarding. And uh, I think, uh, am I right in saying she's delighted that, that her father's um, uh, initiative and, and efforts and expertise are mm -hmm. still remembered. What would you? Uh, you've seen the. You've seen your guild come a long way. 
to include all these members from your humble beginnings with just one meeting and a greater audience than you thought and you've seen other people be presidents now over all these years you know what 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 do you hope for as you uh, as you see this grow and expand over the over the world I think that's a difficult question to answer that's um, why I asked it <laughs> yes, I, I, I have no clear-cut idea I I would like the guild to survive and to grow and to reach mm -hmm. out and that probably re means reaching out into um, nations and territories that uh, speak other languages than English. I think yes. that has been a limiting factor. Mm -hmm. The French are now um, getting involved and, mm -hmm. and that's very welcome because they're a large country with a large number of people. Um, uh, it would be nice perhaps if, if somehow or other the knotting could spread to Chinese speaking countries, to Arabic speaking mm -hmm. countries, to Spanish speaking countries. Sure. Um, but I'd just like to see it continue to grow and, right. and collect more yeah. enthusiasts. Uh, I, mean, I, I see that one of the, the purposes of the, the growth of, uh, and the future is the growth of the Guild and the fact that that, one might say, gives a stepping stone for the future generations. They don't have to start from square one. They can right. grow on our shoulders. They can right. learn and we can see the quality of work that is being done by people today even relatively newcomers because they mm -hmm. they've got that flying start right. of that body of knowledge they're not struggling entirely on their own well i know that was true for me yeah, yeah. and exactly and that's that's yeah. one of the bonuses that people get from the guild is meeting other people and so not you're not in not everybody in the guild has the same interest in knots that you do but right. you find those people that have those fields of interest that are similar to you mm -hmm. I mean, i'm interested in in sailors uh, right decorative and practical rope work right. more than as it were new knots but right. there are others that that's the right. thing that really turns them on right. we may know less than half of all there is to know about knots of course. The, the preoccupation of previous generations whether they were sailors or climbers or whatever um, was with knots that worked right. and usually knots that worked in old-fashioned hairy brown rope right. and anything that didn't was viewed with disfavor and discarded. Right. Um, these days we're freed from those constraints. That's we right. can explore it for fun, um, mm -hmm. uh, as an absorbing hobby, uh, craft, uh, for whatever reason. And, uh, and perhaps today there are more scholarly mm -hmm. people as well who are coming along uh, with a university background with all the research benefits that brings. The mathematics who, and all of that. Sure, and, who can yeah. look into this and, and tell us a lot more about how knots work and why they do what they do. Mm -hmm. And of course there are still, coming back to what we started with, new knots turning up every year. Yeah, so it's, it's more than just going into a, a Borders bookstore and buying a knot book, isn't it? Oh, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Yeah. It's, it's picking up a peel of line and having a go as well and looking back and looking forward. I think so. Thanks for your time. That just about ties it up. You're welcome. All right. <laughs>